hello beautiful souls welcome back to art of awakening and in this energy update video we're going to be looking at the october 2023 eclipse season so we're going to cover the um annular solar eclipse happening on october 14th as well as the partial lunar eclipse happening on october 28th and, and we'll be looking at like the general energetic profile of this time and kind of how that might be affecting us and what we can do to prepare and to move through these energies and use them in really positive ways. All right, so just as an overview, um, I've been feeling really strong energy for quite a while around this fall, but I, it was weird because it's like I couldn't quite see what it was about. It just was like this just weird sense of it's, it's an important time, but I I just couldn't see through to was like why right and then around the eclipse or the uh, around the equinox um this painting came forward this is mary magdalene and this is the third in a uh, series of paintings of mary magdalene she seems to be coming forward around equ the equinoxes and um last fall there was one that was um mary magdalene of the sea and then last spring, it was Mary Magdalene with the sacred flames. And this time, it's Mary Magdalene of the white wind. And I'm going to make a separate video because there's so much symbolism in this painting. And I think she's got a very uh, distinct message of her own. But um, it was just interesting the way it came forward because it, it was like there was this obscuring of the message, right? And I feel like that is what's coming forward a lot around these eclipse energies. It's like, it felt like she was coming forward for the equinox, but then it was just like this, the message kept getting obscured and obscured and it never really quite got out there. And I also, during uh, my October video, it was like, you know, I usually research the astrological events and so forth before doing a monthly video. And here I did the video and after a while I was like, wait a sec, I didn't even touch on the eclipses because it, it just felt like it was obscured or hidden. So I think the biggest thing around this time is the sense of a veil being over the eye, of um, a sense of being obscured, information being obscured, um, vision being obscured. There's something that is kind of obscuring and if you look at what eclipses are that makes a lot of sense right that this the obscure <laughs> eclipses are events that have to do with obscuring and revealing all right so what uh, is coming forward is um i'm going to be dropping a video with mary magdalene's message right on the date of the eclipse on october 14th and then also the snowy owl has been coming forward um and i feel like he's not done yet but um there will be another video probably on that second eclipse with the owl message um, but in the meantime, let's let's look at some of what's going on with the eclipses. And first, looking at eclipses in general. So with this obscuring and revealing energy, on the one hand, it may feel like you're being plunged into darkness and its associated chaos and confusion. And the forces that thrive on these conditions may be out at full force at these times and trying to take advantage of them, okay? So, as I said, I've been feeling these energies actually much of the fall starting just before the equinox. And it feels like they're either going to come to a head and or resolve around the time of the eclipse season. So if you've been feeling a little bit of um, can't quite see through the fog, um, it, it feels like this is all tied up with these energies of this fall. And I, I kind of feel after the eclipse season is over, starting in uh, probably around Samhain, um, beginning of November, All Saints Day, it's going to start clearing out. Okay, so there's that aspect of darkness and not being able to see and chaos, confusion. But on the other hand, with eclipses, it can also be an invitation to delve into the hidden realms and discover or rediscover obscured or hidden or previously unknown truths and bring them to light. 
And this can include esoteric truths such as spiritual law. And it's probably no co coincidence that I'm um, really working hard on bringing forward some spiritual law courses that'll be early in uh, 2024. I'll be um, coming out with those. But in addition to esoteric truths, and you may get downloads during this time, you may really get a lot of information. Um, but it might also be personal truths, uh, such as discovering greater strengths, discovering gifts um, within yourself. And uh, uh, these kind of journeys or experiences or unravel un unveilings can sometimes be painful, but they can also be playful. They can even be peaceful and depending on your own constitution, your history, the attitude, where you are in your journey and so forth. Okay. So starting with a solar eclipse on October 14th, we're going to have an annular solar eclipse. That's the ring of fire type of eclipse. And it's going to be moving through um, visible largely in North America. So it's uh, some people have called it the, uh, the Great American Eclipse. And this is going to be, I believe, the second in a series of about six eclipses that are um, associated with the um, the Aries Libra, okay, dynamic. So this cycle of eclipses, the themes associated with this, they're all about new beginnings. They're about self-expression. It's about stepping into your purpose and partnerships and freedom, liberty, okay? So really, really strong themes right now in the collective, and these are really being... Uh, I, I feel like supported or potentially supported uh, through these eclipses. In, in fact, it, they could be these things. These things could be either supported or they could be repressed, right? Through these eclipse energies, depending on uh, how we work with these energies, and that we can, as light workers, really intend to work with these energies in positive ways to assist humanity into stepping into these themes and working with these themes in positive ways. Okay, um, there may be others out there who are wanting to resist the evolution of humanity and, and maybe using these eclipses in other ways. So I feel like it's really important for us to work with these eclipses um, in, in, with, with full intention and consciousness. Um, I will be doing a free meditation with my, uh, um, with my free membership group for Star Seeds on the October 14th date. And so if you're interested in learning more about that, I'm going to put the um, some information in the description box below. And I'll also be doing an art event on, uh, very close to that, uh, that, that lunar eclipse um, that's also going to be, uh, that's also part of that same membership. Okay, so that October 14th solar eclipse, like I said, is the second in the series. And it's also going to be a precursor to a, a, a total solar eclipse that will also be seen in North America next April, which is going to be super, super powerful. Okay, so this is a really powerful time, this particular eclipse, this October 14th. Uh, okay, let's talk a little bit about solar eclipses in general. Um, in a solar eclipse, the solar element, which is often but not always perceived as masculine, is held back or obscured by the lunar element, which is often but not always feminine. Okay, so this can represent a temporary lapse of reason and or a lapse of warmth, okay? So, and it can also manifest in either a positive or a negative way, right? In its negative polarity, a solar eclipse can invite madness or lunacy. Remember that lunar energy coming in and obscuring the sun, right? Um, so this is why in many spiritual traditions, it's considered bad practice to be outside during an eclipse and to look at, at the sun during an eclipse or to expose yourself to this, these energies. But there's also, also a positive polarity to this, okay? So in, we can, if we work with the positive energies of the solar eclipse, that can be can turn into a really helpful time to access the deep feminine qualities of intuition and emotional flow. And also we can work with the void or the primal darkness during this time in a, in a really powerful way. Okay, and we can do that in a positive way. So it's useful to remember when working with solar eclipse energies that the apparent disappearance of the sun 
happens as a part of the material world, right? We're here on Earth in the material world and we look and it looks like the sun's disappearing. Um, this is the world of duality, okay? And also the eclipse is dependent on perspective. It's like, where on the Earth are you? Okay, so a, an eclipse is never visible from everywhere in the world, but at the same time it is felt everywhere in the world, okay? We have to remember, dealing with eclipses, that in actuality the sun always shines, okay? So this is a, a, an eclipse is we're really working with this law of polarity, right? And so to work with eclipses in a positive way, we need to be really... Uh, have that intention of, of holding on to that solar energy and staying centered and bringing that solar energy into ourselves. It's so that we can be the light that shines in the darkness, so that we can hold that energy, the sun, through whatever happens out there, right? So when the sun disappears from the sky, if we are using these energies in a really positive way, we're holding that sun within ourselves and, 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 and being this light bridge, this bridge of light, right, through the dark times. And I think that speaks so much to this time that we're here on Earth, on the planet. It, right as as light workers right now okay um, so realizing this keeping this at the top of our consciousness is also a reminder of the law of rhythm okay and it can help us move through the ebb and the flow and the seasons of life without losing our equilibrium it's like a practice right we can practice being that sunlight holding that sun that solar essence within our hearts within our solar plexus within our our um, sacral chakras especially in the root chakra um, that that can really help us, even though we may experience the apparent changes that may affect us physically and emotionally, in reality, the light is always there, right? And that in some sense, we are the light. Okay, so again, as a matter of practice, we can visualize bringing the sun into the space of the heart or igniting the solar spark in the heart space and cultivating that steady light in the heart as our own reflection of the sun. Okay, um, internalizing that changeless light and carrying it with us, allowing it to shine forth no matter what physical or spiritual night should fall. All right, so let's look at the October 28th partial lunar eclipse and lunar eclipses in general. Okay, um, so a lunar eclipse is more subtle than a solar eclipse and it can represent the power of materialism and denser energies to affect the emotional and the subtle energetic tides of body and mind. Okay, so the one uh, that we're looking forward to in October 28th um, happens in Scorpio, and it wraps up a whole series of Taurus Scorpio eclipses that started in November 2021. Okay, so think back to what was happening in your life in November 2021, whatever themes are, were happening for you, these are likely to be themes that you've been working on over the last two years and likely that these things are going to start wrapping up and getting ready to move on to a new phase or a new cycle. Um, this is an invitation to bring to conclusion any of such themes that may have started at that time in your life. Um, for me personally, I can totally see from this vantage point that there was a lot of clearing that happened over the past two years, and especially for me, um, maybe for a lot of people in those areas that are associated with Taurus and Scorpio, um, which would be the areas of wealth, money, and um, for me it was a lot about wealth and money, but also sensuality and coming into the body, right, and working with the body. Sensuality can sometimes be sexuality, but not always. It's the physical, the material you know, your your um, physical life um, and, and working with the body, okay? Um, so for me, there was a lot of health issues. There's been a lot of shift in terms of wealth and prosperity. And I feel like I expect that I'm not the only one out there. And so if you um, are resonating with this at all, you may see a big shift or change um, the last couple of years it will have been a preparation in these areas of wealth or health um, and that you may see a, a, a moving forward out of this eclipse season like the beginning of another big cycle. You may be feeling already starting the preparation work for it 
and this is going to really accelerate out of the starting gate starting this November. Okay, and so the last part of this video, I want to be looking at the directions of west and north because these directions are also coming forward is important and I believe it's because we're looking at this law of cycles or the law of rhythm and we're working with the energies of autumn and moving into winter okay and for I think most traditions are going to associate the directions of west and north with autumn and winter and these directions, especially the direction of north, keeps coming forward. It's been coming forward in readings. Both of these paintings explicitly told me that they're working with the direction of north. And uh, so there will be additional messages in these upcoming videos when we look into the, the symbolism here. Um, but for now, I want to just, I, I, I did some Akashic inquiry into these directions. So I wanted to share those messages because I feel like it's it's not just uh, it's not just explaining the energies of the directions but i i feel like the the explanations that came through are specifically related to the energies of right now the energies of this fall and and what the human collective and the planet are are moving through and so just listen with that in mind okay um so first let's talk about the direction of west again it's fall energy I personally have been feeling like I've been working with this direction of West actually since last spring all through the summer and I'll touch on that in a little bit because I asked about that <laughs> right um, why it was a little bit skewed in terms of when it showed for, uh, showed up for me but just to sum up the directions of West according to my Akashic guidance okay the direction of West they said is the direction of journey it is a letting go of all that is familiar and traveling into the wilderness, into the unknown. So it's been called the Wild West. This direction will test you. It will strip you down to the bones. It will help you to realize your past in a new way so that you can more freely access your truth. The West is also a time of slowing down, coming to Earth, of realigning with your natural rhythms, your natural timing. This is the realm of the bear, the dreamer, the shaman. Spider also dwells here. The West can be a place of illusion. You can lose yourself here. The challenge of this direction is to see without eyes, to, to see beyond the shifting shadows and mirages, to the solid, the fundamental truth that underlies all things. It represents the movement towards spiritualization from the shifting, changing world of Maya to the eternal, changeless place beyond time. The element here now is earth. It is the granite bedrock. It is the bones of the body, the bones of the earth, a discovering of the structure that lies beneath known reality. It is the process of uncovering this. It is the process of finding truth. Okay, so... Let me ask you if you are seeing themes of this in over the past six months, put that in the comments below because I certainly have I've seen a, a lot of kind of collective things around finding truth, about seeing through illusion, um, being tested, being stripped down to the bones, having to release things that don't serve you, a lot of purification, especially over this past summer. And even though I know we're talking about autumn energies here, uh, again, I'm going to get to that in a second, okay? The other thing that I wanted to point out is that my guidance is telling me that the element that's strong right now is Earth. Um, there are many different systems of working with the directions, right, and with the um, the elements, with the, the whole different medicine wheel. And... There are, I could only find one <laughs> that actually put the element of earth in the west. Usually it's water, but this came really strong forward as earth. And actually in the last Mary Magdalene painting, it kind of came forward as fire. So there's there's a lot of shifting and changing. Again, I'm going to get to that. Um, but the, the, one, the one tradition that I found that put Earth in the West was an African tradition. So I just thought that was really interesting. So if you know much about African spirituality and can shed any light around Earth as being 
the element of the West. I'd love to see that in the comments. I would love your insights. Um, okay, so, and then from there, we go into the direction of North. And again, that's the direction that I'm feeling is coming forward really strong at this time, at this time of the eclipse season, starting around the equinox and moving forward um, through the eclipse season into this winter, is the direction of North. And let me read what my guidance um, brought forward about this direction here. They say, from the direction of west, one turns to the north. This is the direction of transcendence. This is where you receive divine inspiration, your sacred powers and gifts. Stripped to the bones, you are ready to be filled. The color here is white, the starlight and the snow. The still cold air of winter and the winds that blow. The air is clean and dry, allowing the wind to move clearly. Sound transmits over long distances. It is possible to see for miles and to see beyond. North is the direction of receptivity, of divine wisdom. It is a crowning. In its purest aspects, it transcends air to become space or ether, allowing for transmissions without resistance. It is where you receive the gifts you are to bring to the world. Okay, so what I'm really seeing and feeling and really more and more experiencing here right now is that we've just come out of this huge cycle of purification. And when I speak of this, there may be a certain soul tribe that are really in sync with this. If it doesn't resonate with you, just know that, you know, you may be on a different cycle. Okay, and that's okay. Just listen, take what speaks to you and leave the rest. I feel for some of us are on this big cycle here that are in sync with this. We've just been through this big, big cycle of purification, especially over last spring and summer. And we've, we're coming to this place now where we're really ready to bring it all together to really start channeling spirit and becoming vessels for the light vessels for spirit to move through us. You may start feeling more flow in your life and you may start to really have things revealed to you or just be really shown and guided what your next steps are. And this can be a really beautiful time. Okay, so finally, a few notes on timing, okay? So again, for me, it seems like this past summer was a season of west, and now it's moving in this direction of north. And, and also, there's going to be flux in the elements that you're working with, right? Um, even though typically I would associate west with autumn and north with winter, which would put this about a quarter year off, okay? So I asked my guidance to explain why this may be. And here's what they said. They said, trust your own rhythm. The cycles are being recalibrated right now. This is a period of dissolution and reconstruction. Things may seem chaotic for a while. It is imperative that you listen within, find your own pulse, discover your own internal rhythms, and learn to dance the beat of your own drum, your heart pulse. In time, this will resynchronize with the pulse of the universe. The rhythms of self and earth and cosmos will feel more aligned. For now, though, it's an invitation to play, to observe. Recognize that within each season are echoes of all other seasons. Each direction points its own way to each other direction. There are cycles within cycles. Follow your path in the dance. Be well. All right? So, um... Again, there's a, there's a lot of chaos and confusion, especially around eclipse season. In, in general, in the world right now, we're living in a big time of upheaval. All right, so big message coming through. Really pay attention to your own heartbeat, your own pulse, your own rhythms. It's imperative right now. That's how we maintain and get on the Christ stream, right? The stream of the, the life way, the life wave of the planet, right? We have to listen to our own internal, just like every creature out there listens to its own internal uh, clock, right? Its own internal drumbeat as to when to when to prepare for the winter, when to start building a nest, when to do all that stuff, right? And of course, everything in nature is so beautifully synchronized with the cosmos. Humanity is 
we're in the process of getting back there, but in the meantime, things are in upheaval because we've got to break out of those old cycles, right? And so that's why we may see things seemingly out of sync, but it feels right to you go with it, right? So thank you so much for sticking with me here. It's been a kind of a, a long involved video, um, but I feel like it's super, um, super exciting energies that we're moving into and through. I really wish you the best of this season and again if you feel called to join me in celebrating the eclipse season um, check out the description box below for information on joining my private membership it is free and it is specifically for star seeds and light, light workers to come together in community and to um, shine our light together all right so have a wonderful eclipse season and remember you were born to be free